everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Copper Jacket TV. So we kind of have an interesting video today because on one hand, we just got a great victory, but on the other hand, we also got a terrible defeat. And what's interesting here is I just made a video about this. It was a different case, but I just made a video on this topic day before yesterday where I was talking about getting disarmed just simply by visiting California, essentially losing my Second Amendment rights or anybody else that visits California, they get disarmed and lose their Second Amendment rights as well. Once they cross that invisible border, because California doesn't have reciprocity with any other state, they don't offer non-resident carry permits. And then the transportation laws, if you're going to transport anything, you know, it has to be broken down, put in a locked container and stuff. So essentially you are disarmed once you cross that invisible border. We talked about an FPC case that is looking to force California to recognize other states permit. So it's looking to force reciprocity on California based on the constitution. We have a constitutional right to carry. It doesn't end once we pass into California. California is not like this second amendment free zone, right? So they, they have to recognize it in some way. Well, today we're talking about the CRPA versus LASD case that just essentially accomplished something similar. And uh, looks like people who don't live in California might be able to carry in California now. So let's talk about what's going on. Now, real quick, before we get started, since we're talking about carry, I, I want to let you know that this channel is sponsored by the absolute best, which is Attorneys on Retainer. If you guys carry to defend yourself, if you're thinking about carrying, uh, if you just have something in your house for your own home defense, you need a membership with Attorneys on Retainer. These guys are not an insurance company. They're not like those big insurance companies where somebody has a hand on your policy. They're actual attorneys. When you give them a call, you speak to an actual attorney. So you dial that number on the back of the card, an attorney picks up, you have instant attorney client privilege, and you get representation, the representation that you need that most of us can't afford. So it's basically having an attorney right in your back pocket like that, and they will stick with you all the way through the end, even if it's something that's questionable or you're in a gun-free zone or something like that. Attorneys on Retainer will be there, and I am absolutely proud to have them as the channel sponsor. So again, I just want to let you know about that. Now, let's get to it. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about what's going on here. So there's a case, it's a CRPA versus LASD, the uh, LA Sheriff's Department. And this is a case that really kind of went after multiple angles uh, when it comes to carry. Uh, it went after the long wait times, right? I mean, some people have been waiting a couple years after finishing the entire process, they've been waiting a couple years just to get their permit, which is absolutely out of control. Uh, from everything that's been noted, it's supposed to be like 120 days. But again, I mean, you're looking over 700 days and these people still haven't had their permits given to them yet, uh, which is absolutely outrageous. Uh, talking about the exorbitant fees. I mean, we're talking fees well in excess of $1,000. All the different things that you have to pay for just become uh, astronomical. I mean, you got to pay for your own psychological evaluations and background checks and you got to pay for all this excessive training that's in the new bill and all the different things you have to pay for and then you still don't get it and it also challenges the fact that non-residents uh, are not able to practice their right to carry outside of the home for their own defense uh, once they visit the state of California. And basically what the CRPA is saying is all of that is unconstitutional. You're not allowed to have these excessive delays or wait times, right? Because obviously a right delayed is a right denied. Uh, you're not allowed to charge these exorbitant fees and basically limit the number of people or the type of class of people that might be able to obtain one of these permits. And again, you can't stop the the somebody's rights just because they cross your border and so you have to accept either reciprocity uh which is one of the things that they talked about uh, or at least have a non-resident permit right so some way for people who don't live there to be able to still practice their right once they cross the state lines now unfortunately this judge and i i read it it's like 44 pages and the judge kind of plays a little bit of word games and, and kind of bounces around different topics, saying things are constitutional, they're not constitutional. And I, I usually put up clips and read stuff to you guys in paragraphs, but I think you'll be bored to death by this particular one. Uh, nonetheless, the judge basically goes all over the place with this one and basically grants the injunction in part and denies in part the injunction. So again, we got some wins and we got some losses. When it comes to the wins, uh, the excessive wait times, let's just start there real quick. When it comes to the excessive wait times, the judge agreed that they are excessive. 18 months plus uh, is is just too long. The, the, the plaintiffs shouldn't have to wait that long. But instead of applying that to the state law or the state or what's happening or to everybody, you know, a broad injunction or applying it to the members of the CRPA, the GOA, the 2AF, 
all who are plaintiffs in this matter, uh, they just applied it to the two named plaintiffs. So the excessive wait times now uh, are supposed to be scrubbed, right? People are supposed to be able to get their permits, but it's only going to apply to those two people. Just freaking terrible because obviously there's a lot more people that are being injured by this, right? And injured in a legal manner, uh, injured by this. Uh, and so it should apply to everybody, but it's not. It's just going to be applied to those two people. Now, when it comes to non-resident carry in the state of California, this is where we actually got a big win. And the judge said that the state basically has uh, 30 days to come up with some type of plan uh, in order to allow people who are not residents of California to be able to carry there. Now, there was uh, some upsides and downsides to that as well, because uh, the judge denied an injunction that would somewhat grant reciprocity from other states. So the, if you have a permit in your home state, you know, reciprocity with California, you just be able to, you know, go there and say, I have a permit in my home state. I'll be able to use that in California. The judge said, no, that that's not necessarily covered. And he doesn't believe the the, the plaintiffs have a likelihood of success on the merits when it comes to that point. Uh, because from what I read, at least, or the way that I determined it, is that he kind of finds that point moot if California is forced to have a non-resident permitting system. Okay, So essentially, what this judge did is told the state of California that you must have a non-resident permitting system. You don't have to allow reciprocity with other states, but you at least have to have some type of system where people from other states could apply for a non-resident permit in the state of California. So while the judge's order mostly sucks, I mean, let's let's be honest, right? I mean, for the most part, uh, it seemed like he basically denied like 70% of what the CRPA was asking for or looking for, maybe even a little bit more than that. But we have to at least take the win that we got out of it for now. And I think that having a non-resident permit for the state of California would be huge. I've gotten non-resident permits before, uh, getting a non-resident permit for Utah. I got a non-resident permit for Florida. Uh, those things allowed me to be able to carry in a majority of the country. And I, at least at the time, was happy that I was able to do that. There's some states that have constitutional carry. That's the way that I think it should be for the entire country. You know, even the Supreme Court has said we have a right, not a privilege, but a right to carry outside the home for our own defense. And so, you know, the fact that we already knew that, but the Supreme Court has now reiterated, should mean that we're constitutional carry in the entire country. But that's just not the reality of things right now. But not having a way, absolutely no way whatsoever to be able to protect yourself or practice your rights when you enter the state of California is just absolutely unconstitutional and unacceptable. And now the state of California has 30 days to come up with some type of plan to allow people to apply for that permit. Now, here, here's the problem that I see with all this, okay? There's already so many problems with California's permitting system as it stands right now. Uh, you know, post Bruin, they came out with uh, SB2 and, you know, all, all sorts of different things that they tried to put on their own people to make it impossible for them to get a permit. How difficult do you, get, do you think they're going to make it for people who don't live there, right? California is as tight as you could possibly get when it comes to their regulations. And so for those of us who don't live in California or moved away from California, but a majority of our family is in California, like myself, uh, it is probably going to be extremely difficult. I don't know if they're going to have the same rules and regulations. Uh, like you have to, you know, maybe they're going to check your social media or they're going to have uh, require an evaluation or background checks. They may even limit what you have on your permit like they do in California. So you get to pick something and that one something goes on your permit and that's what you're allowed to carry. Uh, other states, you know, a lot of other states, they don't, they don't have that restriction. I don't have that restriction here in Nevada. Uh, as long as I have the permit, I carry what I want. You know, whatever suits me, I can change it every single day, 365 days a year if I want to. In California, you can't do that. So there may be some type of limitation like that as well. We won't know until they make those final rules. Uh, but again, we still at least have the FPC case. If you guys want to know more about that case, you can check out my, my disarmed, my last video. And, you know, I, I go over that case a little bit more. That case, which to me has a better chance of actually opening up reciprocity in California for people who have permits in other states. But uh, I think it's going to be probably a little bit crazy for those of us who want to visit California to get a non-resident permit. I think it's going to cost a ton of money. I think it's going to uh, take a ton of time. I think that it's going to take a lot of time off work. You're probably going to have to go through and jump through a ton of hoops in order to get it. And then who knows how long it's going to take before it actually shows up in the mail. 
or whether or not they make you pick it up. I mean, who knows? It's, it's California. So again, while it's great and this is all good, we're still yet to see what they're going to do with it. But like I said before, it's like we, we maybe got 70% of a win out of this one and the rest was you know a terrible loss with the judge you know just saying that he doesn't believe that the plaintiffs being the crpa and the name plaintiffs 2af goa and others uh don't have a likelihood of success on the merits on these other parts uh i found fascinating because i didn't see it that way at all these clearly implicate the second amendment uh they show injury to the parties and uh, i don't think that there's any historical analogs that support California's position on this. So it should have been a slam dunk, but it wasn't. So anyway, I wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, if you are interested, you can always, you know, check out the CRPA. They have a page on this where you can, you know, read their statement on it as well as uh, take a look at the actual uh, order itself. So you can take a look at the document and you can read that and get all the details out of it that you want. But essentially we don't know what the whole plan is at least for another 30 days. And I'll let you guys know if anything changes, you know, appeals, things like that, all sorts of stuff tends to happen. So if anything changes, I will jump in front of the camera and let you know about it. I want to thank you all very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please like, subscribe. You guys have a great day.